Hey, what's up? And thanks for tuning in to another edition of The Horror Debate. My name is Jeff Rowdy Jake here, and alongside me, Michael Mandy. And this week we're going to be reviewing The Hills Have Eyes, the remake from 2006, directed by Alexandre Aja. Or is it Alexander Aja? I don't know. Well, you know. We'll have to listen to close. Yeah, Alexandra Asia. Anyways, it's a remake of the (laughs) 1977 film from Wes Craven. Yeah, yeah. And and this is the way it should have been, Mike. Yeah. I I knew when I watched that first one, you know, because I had seen the... I I was ashamed to admit it, but I had saw the remake or seen the remake before I saw the original. And when I was watching the original, I'm like, oh, this is a letdown, you know? But I wasn't taking myself back, you know, time frame-wise. I was talking from a 2006 perspective. Right. Well, I rewatched the remake again, and I still say <laughs> this is the way the story should have been laid out to begin with. This this is a much more fleshed out, graphic, dirty, nasty version of the story, and this is the version that works for me. Yeah, this is the film that that a remake did help a little bit because the first one was so bare bones. Yeah, and, I, I think the, the restrictions were tighter, yeah. you know, on that movie originally than they were. Because we, we watched... I, it was amazing that they got what they had with right. what they had right. access to. But we watched the unrated. And you know what it said on the cover? It said, the version you're going to die for. Did you die? I, I'm talking, ain't I? <laughs> I'm talking. I'm here. You know, no, no, no. It, it was good. It was excellent. It was actually... I, I, I really dug it. I mean, I, I get into the ones, like I said, a million and freaking 5,000 times... That you got to care for the characters. They did a fantastic job getting you to care for this family mm-hmm. who's out there with this renegade dad, which who I loved, by the way, in this uh-huh. movie. That that father, I'm talking about the grandfather of the baby. He was great. <laughs> Talk about Mr. Macho, man. I, I loved it. I, I just I, I so got a kick out of him. He was even trying to be macho when he was burned at the stake, man. <laughs> I loved that guy, you know? Well, basically, uh, you explained it. It's about uh, the story of a family out in the middle of a desert being terrorized by a bunch of weirdos living in the hills. Because of the nucleoid, mm-hmm. as they say in Greece, too. <laughs> the nucleoid. Uh, oh, please bombs. Don't admit you saw that movie. That Grease was... two rules. And don't make me say it twice. <laughs> okay, Michelle Pfeiffer was hot. I'll no, no, the T bones. I mean the T birds. <laughs> yes, they they were. Oh no, I love that movie. I laugh so hard every time I watch that movie. If I'm scrolling through the channels, and and I'll be honest with you, if I'm scrolling through the channels late at night and I see and I have a choice between let's say The Omen, uh, Friday the Thirteenth, uh, The Hills Nightmare Have on Eyes, Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street, and Grease 2. I'm going to Grease 2, dude. Oh, uh, probably just because Maxwell Caulfield looks like Rick Springfield. Hey, it doesn't matter. That movie is hilarious. I mean, I don't want to get off track here, okay. but Grease 2. Okay. It, it's <laughs> probably the best role that Adrian Zemed ever did. I mean, it is just. It I was, don't know. TJ Hooker was. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, God. This, that was this movie makes me laugh so hard. There's just oh, okay. so many great scenes. Anyway, let's go back to the horror uh, stop, thing, will you? Stop about Adrian Zemed. <laughs> let's, let's leave his career in the grave where it belongs. Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, like I said, like I was, I was trying to say before you got me all t-boned up. Uh, uh, the 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 thing about this movie that I love is the fact that it's gritty realism. Yeah, you know, it's it's much dirtier. Yeah. and much more aggressive than yeah. the original. Until I thought it was gritty realism until, and I'm going to take this part away from the movie, until you see the freaks, yeah. because the freaks don't look that good. Well, are they supposed to look good? Well, they don't They're real. supposed to look freaky. They don't look real. They're like yeah. the dude with the lip, right? That goes up, uh-huh, you know, the way hair up, lip up to his yeah. freaking nose and stuff, you know? And he's, yeah. he's showing his bad teeth and all this. I'm looking at him going, that ain't freaking real. I, w- no. I probably would have seen, if I was in the station wagon, right? And I saw this guy approach me, I'd like, be take out the dentures, dude. <laughs> you know, it, it just doesn't look real enough to yeah. me. And it's got to look real. And that guy wasn't intimidating anyway. What was he like? I don't know, four foot eight or something? Uh huh. He was horrible. Yeah. He wasn't intimidating. <laughs> I'm going to get out of the car and bitch slap that guy, man. Yeah. You know, knock those teeth right out of him. Yeah, I mean, Michael Berryman from the original film definitely had that natural, weird, freaky look. To him. He was the bald dude yeah, on the cover. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. That guy is, is known for how freaky he looks in real life. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, uh, but this, this thing, I think they tried too hard. I mean, I did like the guy. Let me, let me just go back a little bit. I, I did like some of the makeup. I did like the guy that was in the wheelchair towards the end. Mm-hmm. I, his head was just waiting to get hit by an axe. <laughs> it was just waiting, and nobody did it. And and, and, and the thing that, that I also think about this movie sometimes is, is I'm reflecting back, is didn't this movie get a little frustrating to you? Frustrating did, did, how? Because, like, the stupid decisions this family made from, like, 
beginning to end, mm-hmm. right? Even when the guy, the little nerdy dude, the cell phone dude, <laughs> right? Yeah. When he's out there and he's trying to recover his daughter, he is making mistake after mistake after okay, freaking mistake. Well, it's kind of like right? what I've mentioned in a different review, how horror movies, the actors have do stupid things to keep the film yeah. going. Because if they made oh a man, smart move, the But didn't you want to just end. get up and shake him by his little, like, roll a dime neck? <laughs> you know, just shake him like, you want your daughter back? Quit making these yeah. stupid mistakes. Pick up your freaking axe. Yeah. You know, he, he leaves it. He puts it down. He goes and does other things. He locks the dog. Wait a minute. Get this. Get this. <laughs> he locks the dog in a car, like a car body that's laying on the ground with, like, chicken wire through the windows. He locks the dog in there. This is the same freaking dog that took out a dude's, like, trachea earlier in the movie. <laughs> now, if I'm going to get my daughter and there's all these freaky Jabba the hut looking dudes laying around me, right, I'm taking that freaking dog with me. Cujo's coming in the house. Okay? And, yeah. and you're not leaving him out there to sit in the heat yeah. inside this car. Yeah. Are you nuts? Yeah. Well, one thing that, that I liked that this film expanded on that the original did not, in the original... They just go driving out into the desert in search of this silver mine and whatever, and then the car just... The dad freaks out when a jet flies over and, the, and breaks the car. That was in the first movie. That was in the first yeah. movie. Now, in this movie, the freak gay people... The freak gay people. The freak gay. <laughs> the freak gay. The freak gay. Freak gay. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> they, 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 they put, like, a piece of uh, barbed wire buried in the dirt and then jerked it up so it popped all the tires. Right. So so that... Now, okay, it's not them now, doing okay. a stupid move. Just, ooh, now, I'm afraid of a jet. Wait a, minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And you just, you just hit the nail on the head. Here was the first stupid idiotic move, right? These guys, they, they roll over a spike strip, okay? Yeah, it blows strip. all four tires, and the first thing this father does, who is supposed to be a detective, right? <laughs> who is supposed to be starting his own detective business, the first thing he does is go, must have been the heat. <laughs> Blew all four tires simultaneously? <laughs> Are you high? Yeah. You know, that's, that's just, I don't know. I don't know. I, I started to get real frustrated real quick with this whole thing. The mother, when she got shot, I did the wave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because yeah. she she was on my nerves from from like a minute one. Uh-huh. You know, the daughter that the 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 geek dude was like drooling over uh-huh. when she's sunbathing. You know, I mean, her scene was pretty intense. Oh, right? speaking of with her the big scene. mongoloid who's, yeah. who's like raping her. You yeah, know? yeah, I mean, okay. Speaking of her, the, the, okay, this is the unrated version we saw. What was right. different in this film that, that from the movie? Well, the first thing I noticed was that in the in, in the actual scene that I was just talking about in the rape scene, uh, there was a little bit more of a. Uh, I'm not going to give it away. There's a little bit more detail but, in the but scene. It, but it wasn't graphic It wasn't detail. graphic it detail. Was it was more like a, a gesture, kind of a motion right. by the guy. Yeah, the camera stayed more on the freaky dude. I mean, the, the, she was out of camera range almost as much as you yeah. saw in the movie theater. So don't be expecting, ooh, the unrated. We're going to actually see a mongoloid guy jumping up and down on her, you know, doing push-ups. I saw no. that movie. I don't know. Never mind. This is this movie. Okay. You know, I mean, it's <laughs> this mongoloid dude jumping up and down. Yeah. I think I saw that I mean, that the, one. the three <laughs> seconds of footage that they added to this unrated version didn't take away or add anything really to me. No. You know, I, I think there was a little more detail towards the end, and it, it might have been that my memory failed me. Don't get me wrong, but I thought there was a little bit more detail when they were beating the geeky dude up. Uh-huh. And what better time to add more detail? Then when you're taking this lump of junk out, right? <laughs> this guy, I mean, okay. Now, like, when I was talking about, if, if you have any questions about what I'm about to say, go back and listen to the Originals review. Because I mentioned it in the Originals review. How this guy, for whatever reason, in this particular flick, as soon as I saw him come on the screen, I wanted him dead. <laughs> right? I wanted him dead. I was gonna I was gonna hire some contractors to go out there and knock this guy off. He he bothered me from minute one. And it figures, it figures that the guy that I hate the most. Is the guy that's going to live. And you notice at the end, after his face has been smashed by, like, I don't know, 15 fists. He's been, he's been, his head has been put to the turnbuckle like 18 times. He's been smashed on the ground. His freaking glasses were still on <laughs> at the end of the movie. Now, I want to buy my kids those glasses because I know they're going to last. Yeah. You know, I was about to write Wes Craven and go, what, what did y'all use for those frames? <laughs> okay, because there's there's no way. This guy was getting his head bashed in, and his glasses looked halfway normal at the end of the movie. He was covered in blood. He was bleeding from every orifice, but his glasses looked good. He would probably got his glasses the same place where Indiana Walmart. Jones bought his hat. The hat that stays on. <laughs> exactly. All exactly. right, Jeff. How many stars, man? I'm not done yet. Let me let me let me <laughs> say, let me also say this. Okay. Let me also say this. 
I, I, I really like, I mean, who would have thought, who would have thunk it that that the main, I won't say the main lady, but let's just say the mother of the baby who, who got impregnated by this geeky dude, right? <laughs> and we're not, not not geeky dude, the freaks in the hills. No, the geeky dude that's in the in the trailer, right? <laughs> okay. who, who was trying to fix the air conditioning, but it took like the 16-year-old son to right. come in and fix it for uh-huh. him, right? I'm talking about this guy. Who would have thunk that her, her death was brutal? Her death was brutal. Uh-huh. And it made you sit there and go, wow. <laughs> you know, I mean, no, seriously. I mean, that, that kind of bothered me a little bit. Her death was really nasty. I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't like splatter, you know, that was making me sick or anything. It was the fact that it was just like point blank to the head, no emotion, nothing. And then you saw her when Geeky Dude came back to try to help her out, you know, uh, the after effect of the whole thing. And her, her fighting for her breath and fighting for her life and then finally passing. I mean, that was... That was the most intense part of this movie. Forget the rape scene. Forget anything. Forget geeky dude getting his head put into the turnbuckle. This the 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 the, 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 the mother dying. Not the not the older mother, but the you know his his girlfriend, wife, whatever she was. Uh, that was nasty. That was good stuff. That was like oh, you know, you just sat there and went oh, you know, oh, you, oh. you you felt for him. You oh. felt for him. I did. Anyway. So, how many stars, Mike? I don't know. This one's a toughie. You know, I mean, I like I will her. say the DVD looks spectacular. Yeah, I mean, it was done really well. The blacks were deep. The colors were I, awesome. I mean, no, no. In some movies, you know, they look a little faded. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like like acid wash jeans faded, right? Mm-hmm. I'm talking about, like, this movie was, like, contrasty, big time, in your face. The blood looked real. didn't look like Frank's hot sauce. It was, we weren't in the Suspiria well, realm. They did kind of use, a, I think, a little too much of the yellow filter on the film when they were yeah, okay, you know, on but the that, Yeah, but they were in the freaking but, desert, yeah, man. Uh, I mean, you know, it was it was done tastefully, uh-huh. I thought. You know, and I, I mentioned, as soon as I put it on, I mentioned to my wife, this movie looks great. I mean, it looks like it, there was no grain in the picture, and, and it's kind of funny. Let me, let me just get on that a little bit. You know how we were talking like all these dirty films, right? They leave that grain. In, in the picture uh-huh. sometimes to make it look grittier and nastier, right? This movie did not do that, and it was still the grittiest, nastiest movie <laughs> next next to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre that I have ever seen. I mean, this this is disturbing stuff, folks. Which Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original or the remake? The original and the remake, because okay. they both used that same film kind of thing where they left the grain. Okay. You know, the original did it more. You well, know because they had to. That was the kind of film they used. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, though. Yeah. But that adds something to it. I mean, we, we've talked about this before, visually. And this this movie did none of that. And it was still one of the nastiest flicks I've ever mm-hmm. seen. This is, like I was saying, this is disturbing stuff. And, and believe it or not, I was actually watching this to begin with with one of my sons. Uh-oh. And he started looking at me like, Dad, Dad, this is screwed up, man. I mean, there, there's something wrong with these people, you know. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And my wife was finally like, you know what? It's time for him to go. <laughs> You know, we, we were getting into some brutal stuff, man. Um, this is not a date movie, folks. I mean, watch, watch this movie, and you're going to be affected by it if you have any, any, uh, I don't know, feeling. So, Jeff, what do you think? The remake or the original? The remake by a, by a football field. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. This is, this is one of those few times that the remake totally outclasses, totally outshines the original in every way. All right. How many stars? Um, You know what? This is a four. Yeah? This is a four. This is, like I said, man, just on the level of being disturbing, this is a four. Okay? Mm-hmm. Acting-wise, solid. I didn't like the geeky guy. He was trying to sell me a phone, right? <laughs> but but I, I dealt with him, and, and I have to admit, you know, he did act pretty well. Well, I think they were trying to pick a guy who would irritate you, too. Oh, he I was mean, a slimy little yeah. dude, man. I just, oh. You know? No wonder the dad didn't like him. Yeah. You know? There remember, you go. Remember what he said? Remember what the dad said to her about him? Oh, he's a Democrat. He's not going to yeah. shoot a gun. Remember? I was yeah. cracking up. That dad was so macho. He was macho enough for every male character in that movie. <laughs> if he would have got his hands before he got burned at the stake, if he would have got his hands on those guys in the hills, I would have paid to watch it. Ringside. UFC rules. I would have <laughs> good stuff, man. I, I just love that character. Anyway, yeah. four solid stars. All right. Well, the thing is with... Uh, with the plot was pretty much the exact same thing. I mean, the direction-wise, I wouldn't say was inspiring or anything. It was pretty much, I think, just all the little details that we added, like giving a, a better reason for the car breaking down, what a better they, reason for the people no. in the hills being all gorked out. Right. That's well, what I'm saying. These are pluses over the original. What they did was they took, they took that basic engine 
from movie number one. Right. And they tweaked it and polished it into something that would be acceptable in 2006. And not only was it acceptable, they took it to a whole new level. I wouldn't say that level was too high up, of it, but it, it was a better level. I, I would. You know, I would so say at I'll least it. at least two yeah. notches up. Uh, you know, I know on what scale are we talking here, yeah. but I mean it is a better movie. Yeah, yeah I, I would definitely say this is a three star film. Okay. I mean, I, it, when I left the theater, I wasn't jumping at. Oh wow! Well, oh my, uh, but I just okay. They I'm did not a saying, good job. I'm not saying it's the greatest movie in the world as far yeah. as like story and I mean, plot. I didn't find myself jumping up and down when the movie was right. over. Right. But what I'm saying is that it will but affect it was, you. It will move you. Yeah. It was. It and was anything a, that moves me, anything. Let me put it to you this way. It was way. a respectable attempt. Anything that can move me now. I mean, I've seen it all, folks. Okay. <laughs> anything that can move me now. And especially like with a death Dude, scene. Dude, you need a bulldozer to move you exactly, now. Exactly, exactly. And, and to sit there and go, wow, that was brutal stuff. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, you know, just for that headshot, I was like, wow. You know, I mean, that just, that took the air out of me, Mike. Yeah. I'm not kidding you. I, I, I cared for the character. I liked her. She was a likable uh, character, written very well. And then, bam, gone. And then you start thinking, that was a mother. That was a wife. You know, so what if it was to the geeky cell phone dude? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, this is, you know, you start thinking about that. And that, that's a moving thats a moving part of this flick, man. I'm telling you, uh, you know, this is not a date movie. Don't take your date to this. You will not get any that night. Thank you. All right. I'm Michael Mandy. Those are words to live by. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's Roddy Jeff with the good quote there. Uh, and we'll talk to you next week at the Horror Debate.